Ireland, a little country with a rich history and one of the most breathtaking places on earth. In this nation of seekers and storytellers, adventure is just around the corner, if you know where to look. Sean Smith is one of Ireland's most exciting chefs with a passion for fresh ingredients. Legend has it, he'll only cook it if he's shaking the hand of the guy who's caught it. When George Tracy's not saving lives with the Dublin Fire Brigade, you'll find him hunting, gathering, and living off the land. He's a man with a special set of skills. In this brand new show, our two fearless foragers will travel the length and breadth of this bountiful island to meet the produce pioneers who are catching, growing, and brewing some of the greatest food on the planet. And when they've found what they're looking for, they'll create some unforgettable dishes. This is Find It, Cook It. In this episode, our two adventurers are heading off to sunny Wicklow on the hunt for venison. They'll also be visiting Glendalock Distillery to discover how their gin gets its unusual flavor. As always, the challenge will be to combine everything into a cracking dish. You don't want to miss this. Welcome, Sean. Welcome to Wicklow. Oh, yeah, thanks for having me. This is this my neighborhood. Yeah. It is, yeah, do you like it? Can we go for a party? Yeah, I'll put you. We'll go for a cup of tea after. <laughs> I've had it all. So, I see you brought a hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had go to do something to keep the oil coming. That's it. So we might get something with the table with the hat. We might try and we're going to try and run after it. Did you bring a gun with you? No. Not my legal one. Okay. All right. <laughs> and you bring some clothes, hunting gear? No, nothing. Have you got any for me? I do. You're lucky. You're lucky. George, George, you look after you, all right? Double XL. I think I'm a three XL. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I got the, I got the triple XL for the belly, all right. <laughs> so all what's right. these jokes you have here? So these are the tools for today, all right. George has been a licensed hunter for 15 years and is tasked by the estate to cull their deer population for health and safety reasons. Guns should only be used by expert hunters. Please do not under any circumstances attempt this at home. Sean's gun isn't loaded. He just got it so he can look good next to George. So be careful then. Not much mix it so All right, but you look after that. 17 <laughs> euro, was it? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> So I've been kind of hunting um, and, and doing a bit here for about 14 years, just trying to manage the manage the wildlife. So, so like if if, if the magpies get get too uh, get too populated, that that'll have an effect on the songbirds. Right. So, uh, so what we try and do is just keep a, keep an even balance. There's no main predators here, you know. So even on the deer, they don't have a predator. So the, the deer population can grow by about 30 percent every year. Right. And if they get the hair gets too big. There's too, there's too little food for the, for the herd to go around and then that herd then can get diseased and get weak. So we try and keep the herd within a certain parameter. So we, what we try and is just create is a healthier herd all around. Okay. You know? Do you reckon he'd be a good, uh, good hunter? He might do, yeah. If his hunting is, if his hunting is as bad as his cooking, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go hungry today. <laughs> When's the best time to shoot them? So from the 1st of September, right. uh, we can shoot them, but we're in the, we're in the rut season there, so in October. So for about six weeks, the, the male deer will lose about 20% of their body weight covering females. Right. So the deer's sense of smell is fantastic, so we need to get the wind in our favour, right? Okay. And then what we need to do is try and find signs that this, that this deer are moving about. Right. So we're looking for, looking for footprints, and here's one, look. So there's a, there's a small one, there's a calf. Uh, so the calves would have been born in May, June, and they'll be nearly fully weaned now. Right. Another two or three weeks, and they'll be completely weaned off the, off the mother. So this this rest tracks about. So we'll have a we'll have a scout around, all right? Yeah. Loving the slow mo, lads, but we've got a show to make. I think George is hunting for deflated balloons. So that's the deer, that's the male deer's rutting call. So he's trying to call females in. All right, so they typically give three whistles and there's a bit of a, a groan at the end of it. There's a vocalization from them, all right? So we'll just listen for another call coming back there. So here's a little deer motorway, all right? Okay. And then they come down and they go off down this way then. And that they run down there, is it? Yeah, and that brings them down towards the, the fresh, the, the kind of the, the short grass is really sweet and then towards the morning time, they'll start running back up the hill again. It's nice and quiet up there, you know. They have some view as well, don't they? Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous it is. All right, pal, there's a nice animal up ahead, right? Hasn't seen us at all, the wind's in our favor, so when I get down here, you just get in there behind me, all right? That's it, man. 
Sean looking absolutely terrified there. So I need to do is just we got a good backstop behind the animal as well, all right? So we know where the bullet's going to go. Yeah. Just calm our breathing down there. There's a few of them there. There's a few, yeah. We want this one there with a the kind of antlers a bit to form, see? So that might hurt other stags when it's rotten. It's just, it's just turning broadside now, so. Right. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow, that was tense. That, that was great all day, wasn't it? Yeah, good exciting morning in yeah, the yeah. end, yeah. Great yeah. to get one, isn't it? Yeah, nice, all right. We're gonna meet a friend of mine, Dan. Just down the road a little bit, she's a forager. So we're gonna pair up some nice uh, some nice berries to go with us, maybe some juniper, blackberry. Yeah. Um, and we'll head off into the restaurant Brilliant. then. Yeah, Great. lovely. But before that, George stops off for a quick chat with Ed Hick, one of Ireland's top butchers. This guy's an absolute legend. So Ed, what's the benefits of eating wild game as opposed to farm produce? I suppose, George, the mad thing is any wild food, not just wild game, but wild salmon, wild hare, wild rabbit, you know, anything like that that's wild, including wild berries, we seem to be able to get more out of it. There's more bioavailability, so we get better vitamin C out of the berries than we get out of necessarily farm berries. We get better proteins out of wild meat than we do out of farmed meat. It's just the way it is. Whether that's the way we are inside or whether that's just the way they are, I'm not exactly sure, but we get more out of them. So you can get away with eating a lot less. Well, you're in the best spot for it. I mean, it's Wicklow, you know, we've got fantastic venison here. Some of the best in the country. Uh, a lot of the uplands, great herbage up there for them and all that sort of stuff. Wide open spaces. Yeah, you're in the right spot. Good man, Ed. Lucky we're in the right spot because we've shot half the episode now. Next stop, Glendalock Distillery to meet resident forager Geraldine Kavna. She handpicks each ingredient. Let's see if the lands can pick up a few tips. This is Glendalock Distillery. We'll show you around. Um, this is our wonderful still. It's a hybrid still. So it has a pot and column. And we call her Kathleen, because it's traditional to give a still a lady's name. The guy up here on the wall at the back is St. Kevin. And he was obviously the founder of Glendalock. And he's the person who's on all of our T-shirts and our bottles because we liked the story of St. Kevin. We don't do things the simple way. We yeah. try to do things in a unique way. So Kathleen was um, a lady who tried to woo St. Kevin and was unsuccessful, but we called the still after Kathleen. Mmm, that Kathleen one sounds a bit naughty. Keep your distance, lads. Geraldine cracks open the copper still so the lads can get dangerously close for a sniff. Watch yourself, Sean, you don't want to get pickled. What's the process? Like, I, I love gin, but I, I, I wouldn't know where, how, to, how, how would you start even yeah. going about? Yeah, no, it's a valid question because lots of people don't know. There's different types of gins. There's like a compound gin where things are added afterwards and there's lots of different types of bathtub gin. Our gin is a distilled gin. So that means that everything is added to the still in the distillation process okay. and nothing is added afterwards. Every single thing that goes into the gin is wild and I pick it. We're looking for uh, something to pair with venison. Okay. So uh, I think I said mm -hmm. on the phone, so we maybe some gin and some, some kind of local berries or mushrooms or that. Yeah, so I have a few things in my basket. I've got a full range of gins for you to taste through. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wild food around at the moment that does pair very well with venison because it's just, it's the right season for these things, so. As I said, we pick ingredients all year from around the start of March. The foraging season is really good from the start of March till around now, the end of October. So um, at this time of year, you're getting, of course, mushrooms. Yeah. We haven't used those in the gin yet, but I'm always open to experiments. Elderberries, which are fantastic with venison. I've rose hips. I also have some slows. They could be great um, with venison also. They're extremely bitter. Has anyone ever bitten into a slow? Mm. That's your chance. So these are always, well, you add sugar. It's like eating a tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been eating tea bags? <laughs> He's eating weirder things than that, Geraldine. It's that bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you like, we can go upstairs to the tasting area. And if you like reading, I can bring you to my library. <laughs> you can read. I'll go on. <laughs> well, I'm kind of joking. I have a library here, but it's not your average library. Okay. There's no Enid Blyton in this library. Very good. <laughs> So we'll go and have a look at that. Wow. So this is the library. Okay, That's this is the library. Good, because yeah. I can't read. Yeah. <laughs> We're building up a collection of all the different ingredients we use over the year. 
So this is like almost our full range of gin. We have problems in that we find it hard to stick to just making one gin or two gin or eight gin. So <laughs> there's always, because we have all these lovely ingredients, of course, everyone's always having wonderful ideas and um, the accountants are always like, we have enough gin. Oh my God, that's so good. How much of this can we make? <laughs> this is our four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Our wild botanical gin, which is our best seller, which has all the flavors of all the year. And this one is available all over the world. Like it's in 42 countries now. What? So what's it, what do you call that? We call that our wild botanical gin. Your wild botanical, yes. that's, yeah, that's my favorite. So which one would you like? I think the, the first one we had. Okay, the wild botanical. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll get you a full bottle because okay, it's nearly empty now. It, drink it most of <laughs> As the sun sets over Wicklow, the lads make for the hills laden down with venison, gin and Geraldine's foraged ingredients. It's going to take some sorcery to combine all of that into a delicious dish. So, George, we're back again, yeah? Yeah, good day yesterday, did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, it was very good, yeah, very interesting. Uh, the Glen de Loch distillery was uh, very educational. Yeah, Geraldine uh, was great. Yeah, very, um, very knowledgeable and very passionate for what you're doing. So, listen, let's try and incorporate the Glen de Loch into the venison and see what we can end up with it. Let's make a mulled wine, but instead of a wine, we use the gin. Lovely, yeah. We'll take off the, the loin, wrap it in bacon. We'll have some pumpkin, we do a roast pumpkin. We have some savoy cabbage, a cream savoy cabbage, some carrots, a bit of celery, very simple dish. And we can use the more, we can use the gin, yeah. make a kind of a gin sauce, Lovely. with kind of a spicy, Christmassy, uh, we'll maybe pickle some mushrooms. Sean starts preparing his sauce by roasting peppercorns coriander seeds, star anise, fennel, and Geraldine's juniper berries. While George looks on completely baffled, until he sees an ingredient he recognizes, gin. That's got a little bit more seasons in, doesn't it? Yeah, so you can, we kind of burn off the alcohol a little bit. We'll put in some of this elderberries that we got from her. Yeah. It's Scots pine. It's Scots pine, yeah. And uh, we can add, a, we can add a, that, that in there. And actually, we'll just put a little uh, smidgen of red wine in there, yeah? Yeah, a smidgen. We'll, t we'll start the pumpkin. So the pumpkin will take a bit of a while to do. But this is great. You can ro ro oven roast all this, but we'll just do one portion for one dish, yeah? Would you treat it like a butternut squash? You treat it exactly yeah. like a butternut squash. So it's frying. You can hear the frying of it. And what we'll do is we'll add some garlic. Give it a nice bit of colour. And we'll just stick it in the oven. <coughs> so we, here we have the loin. So ideally what we want to take is take all this stuff off it here, yeah? All the sinew. So it'll just make it quite chewy and tough. Yeah, right? yeah. So this never cooks down when, you, when you're cooking it down, yeah? This is the first time you've seen my knife skills. I hope they're up to standard. Ah, Sean, don't get bashful now. You're like a little ninja. Are you seeing a bit of a demand now for venison again? Yeah, um, it's not as uh, frowned upon and it's not as... Like, people have this idea that game is meant to be rotten. It's not. It's not meant to be rotten at all. And uh, we've kind of come the full circle and going, well, actually, game's pretty nice if it's cooked well, you know? It needs to be cooked very rare or it's tough, you know? It's You've got to really... take it out while it's still pink. It keeps on cooking after it's been... Removed from the oven, doesn't it, venison? Yeah, it's it, it, like all meats will, but you just need to, to gauge the temperature of it rightly. So, do you want to be serving this red, pink? Oh yeah, very pink, um, very very pink, but not so the blood's running out of it either. But it's, so if I was roasting this, then I'd be wrapping it in bacon. Yeah, or wrapping it in bacon, similar. and what we do is we caramelise it in the pan. Do you want to try a little bit of the gin? Yeah, 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 go for it. Yeah. We're cooking away. So this is their this is their four season gin. Yeah. Wild Botanica. So it's got a little bit from all four seasons. She says it's a nice sipping gin. Yeah, not too much now. Pretty sure that was a full bottle this morning. Seriously, who <laughs> drank all of the gin? This this is all from Wicklow. This venison's from Wicklow. So I, I'm kind of suggesting that we we maybe portion a piece of this, like so. It's almost what she's doing with the with the gin you're doing with the food. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm going to try and do. So, we put the venison in there. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of salt, not so much salt. So that's their winter gin. Yeah, let's go. And we uh, take a piece of garlic for sake. 
just one piece, not in too much. We uh, add uh, a few bits of this. That's the Scots point again. Yeah. Not, and then we take some of the, maybe a clove, uh, maybe a fennel seed, some coriander, and we regenerate the whole lot back into this again. Maybe a squeeze of olive oil. And uh, put a, yeah. Up, up. So we're kind of bringing it back to Geraldine's kind of philosophy, or yeah. even when, remember when we done the oyster one, that we kind of uh, looked on the area yeah. and we kind of put together dishes that guys that are doing yeah. from that area. Like the honeybees are feeding on the, the heathers and the stuff yeah. again. We added the header to the local oysters. And it's, that's the kind of maybe principles that we're kind of going yeah. with, but maybe it, it kind of makes sense to me. It all kind of works together. Uh, so we, we've done, we put the pine heather back in again to the venison with the pieces of the glendalock gin that, that um, they've given it, given to us. Then the gin again in the, in the jus. The, the, the gin again then, we bring it all in again. And, and you can really smell, it's nearly yeah. the same smells that we yeah. had yesterday. It's all crossing over. Uh, it's all crossing over. So, Listen, we're going to put this on the side. So this is the two loins, great, loads of portions, loads of everything. But we're just concentrating on making this dish now, yeah? So what we've done is we've backpacked this down. George, I'm going to ask you to uh, go and slice some pancetta for us. And uh, what we do is we'll, uh, while you're slicing the pancetta, yep. that'll, that'll marinate it up and I'll have a quick clean down, yeah? No, Chef. George. What do you think of that and getting better on there? Unbelievable, unbelievable, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. very cool, yeah. <laughs> Remember, like I said, there's no fat in the venison. It's very, very lean meat. And the idea that um, we're going to put some fat back into it, easier to cook and it's going to hold very well. So I'm just going to pull the pumpkin out for a second. Did he say pull the pumpkin? So it's kind of a roast pumpkin. It's kind of... Almost like it's caramelized there. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. And we're just going to leave that on the side. We can bring it back up to the heat when we need it again, yeah? That's hot. It's hot, George, yeah? George, it's hot. Yes, yes. I'm glad George the fireman knows the difference between hot and cold. It's almost like doing the chicken breast with stuff and wrapped in. Yeah. Rasha? Yeah. Just a bit more high-end. Bit more class. Yeah, so you've got a, a, this is a, the pork belly. So the, the, the pancetta is like the, the, the belly of yeah. all the like streaky bacon. That looks great. George is absolutely starving there. I'd say he'd eat that raw. And what we do is we're going to poach this for around 25 minutes at 58 degrees in the water bath, this famous water bath. I actually um, stopped using the water baths only for particular things. It's very good for this. Was that a, a kind of a fad that came in for cooking, was it? Water yeah, bath? everybody was water bathing everything and everything was going through it, but there's only a certain amount of things that work through the, the water bath. It can't be a one-trick pony. Sean's got no love for the water baths. He must be a share kind of a guy. Oh, that's bad. The thing about the water bath is, is to, it kind of uh, reverses the system of uh, relaxation. So you you know what sometimes when you get a steak, you, uh, you put a steak into a hot pan and. Yeah. It comes from the fridge, you put it in the hot pan and, and the first reaction is when you put something cold into hot, it goes like this. So when you do that both sides, what happens is the whole, all the fibers, all the, all the proteins go like this. So when you, when you have something from cold to hot like this, this is where you get this uh, toughness from. So what you should do is actually cook the steak to, to your liking as you want to say, and then let the steaks rest. Yeah. So in this process, what we're doing is we're relax relaxing the meat first into this environment that it's quite 50, 54 degrees. And then actually we're just going to give it a, a, outside a little caramelization so the inside of the meat is relaxed. I am good, huh? <laughs> You're getting better, <laughs> say. George, well, you're going to be on your ear. So you, you see this sauce is kind of coming together. There's a load of impurities into uh -huh. it. We're going, to, we're going to skim off the impurities. Mm -hmm. He's not even listening to you now, Sean. So this is all ready for the water bath, George. Well, George, have the water. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Second part, George, you ever peel the carrot? Build the cow blindfold. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So we're just going to do a little bit of uh, savoy cabbage, cream savoy cabbage. 
So I'm just taking the cabbage out of the water, sticking it on here, so I, we take all the water out of it. We have the venison pan here ready to go. How long is on the venison, guys? It's just done now. Yeah. Yeah. So pull out, pull out that one, and we have a go. That'll be the gin. There he is again, like clockwork. Speaking of you. Welcome back, Chef. <laughs> so the idea, we're going to put some butter on here, yeah? So you're adding fat back into it, yeah? Okay. So we're looking to see we're basting morning. it, yeah? Like you're basting a turkey. That's why you base a turkey, because it's so dry. The texture and flavour as well. The bun was the carrots. You can smell. So this is, say, it's rustic. It's nice. All over the plate. So we have this kind of rawness, but it's still cooked. In fairness, that looks delicious. I'm actually starving now. It smells incredible. So this is Wicklow, Sean? This is Wicklow and I paid for me. You know, it's a, uh, this is seasonal. This is uh, the gin sauce made with uh, all the botanicals that we received yesterday. A uh, piece of bacon to increase the fat levels, so a nice piece of loin. It, this is a great dish. So George, hook on there. Hello. It was your view. What are we going for? Trying all together? Yeah. Try an individual, then try it all together, and then see how it works, you know? All right. You really get the gin coming through the venison. Yeah. I've had pumpkin like that before I tell. Normally we've had it in, like, sweet stuff, never savoury. It works. Yeah, keep it up. You'll get there. Yeah, thanks. All right. All right. Thanks, Chef. Next time on Find It, Cook It, our fearless foragers head to Cork for a very special culinary adventure. Irish Media Network. We entertain.